It's the 2025.3 release of Home Assistant. In this release, we're going to talk about tile cards. We're going to talk about some voice stuff and maybe a little bit of something else. I'll take you through what's changed, what's new, what's different, and all that stuff I normally talk about. So let's get started. As I mentioned, there was a lot of work done on the tile cards in this release. And I created a small little dashboard to kind of highlight some of these changes and show you what's different and what's new. There's a couple of new features that have been added. Uh, one of them is switch toggle, at least that's what it's, I'm calling it, and then uh, counter actions. These are features that probably should have always been there, but uh, for some reason got overlooked, but they're added now. So there's a couple things here um, about the way this works, and I'm gonna combine some new features and other things as I go along here. But here's just the, the toggle, right? If you have a switch, for example, I'm using a switch here, I can toggle this directly from the dashboard itself or directly from this card. I don't have to uh, go into the card and then toggle it, which you've seen for some of these other things. For example, if I click this, this is what it used to look like. And then you would toggle this on and off by clicking here. Now you can put the toggle directly on the card. And there's a couple of ways to display this. You can see that I've put this particular switch toggle in line with the card. And this one I've put down below. So if I go into edit mode here, you'll see that I can go and edit the tile card. And there's been some changes to the way the tile card editor is done as well to make things a little easier to see. For example, in the content layout, you can see kind of how it's gonna look if you click through on these. You've got the, uh, the little bit of preview over here, but you also have it down here to see that if I click on vertical, the information is gonna kind of be centered for this particular card uh, right along the center of that. And then of course, you've got the toggle right below it. If I do horizontal, it kind of moves things over here and moves them around um, in this fashion. The other thing you can do under features is you can either put stuff along the bottom or you can put them in line. In this case, the feature we have, the only feature we have available is toggle. And with toggle, it's either gonna be along the bottom, which you see here, or if I put this in line, now you can see that this is over on the side and we're gonna save that here. And then you'll see now, if I get out of editing mode, that both of these are in a inline format. So that's a change to the way you can edit the tile cards. It's a big change to the way the editor looks in addition to having the switch toggle. Another new feature is this counter actions or allow you to update the counter directly within the card and reset it. This was created, I created a, a helper. So if I just go to helpers, I created a helper called a, a demo counter. And in that demo counter, I've added that entity to this particular dashboard. And I can just click on these things right here. And then I can also reset it. So that gives me the ability directly from the card to reset it. And you can do the same kind of stuff you do with the other tile cards. This is just a tile card and I can put stuff bottom or I can put it in line. So then you have your demo counter over here on the side or your controls for the demo counter over here on the side, just like you would anything else you can put in line versus having it below. So that's an option for you on that demo counter. So these two are the new things, switch toggle and counter actions. And then I kind of showed the same thing with inline elements. This is a, a tile card that uses my thermostat. The difference is there's more features here. So the feature position I currently have set for inline, and you can see how it displays right here. If I choose to set everything below, you now see that you have additional features that show below. If you choose inline, only the first feature is gonna show up in the inline. So if I wanted the HVAC modes to be there instead, I would just move that up. I can add other features. So I have the preset modes, and then I also have the target temperature. Well, I have that already, let's see. Uh, one more here, uh, preset fan modes. So I have all these fan modes, but you can see only one thing shows up in the inline. But if I choose to put everything below, then everything shows up below the, uh, the entity itself. And then you can change the layout to make this wide, I believe, there we go, and use up that entire space. You can also shrink it if it's available or you can make it even bigger. You only can go so far up because it has to display these things below. And then you can go precise mode like you 
have been able to do in the past and kind of adjust that to a little bit more precise layout. So I could come in here and make it like that if I wanted to or whatever. So the difference now is that in this particular layout for the tile cards or this particular display, you can actually put everything down below along here. Or if you want to have that space back, you just go in and you set it for uh, inline mode and choose whichever thing you want to display. In my case, I want the target temperature because that's what I interact with the most. And I'll save it. And now I have, well, I need to change the layout. Don't forget to change the layout if you do that because otherwise it's too big. Reset that. And now it's back to the single line, full width card. You can make that card, I believe, narrower with the inline. Let's see. Nope, it won't let me go any farther. So that's the way that is for inline. So it's, it takes the tile card and it, it displays it across the entire, uh, entire width of that section right there. And you have this other thing called, I'm calling it visible actions or not in this particular section. And what that means is that these tile cards, sometimes it was hard to know whether or not the actual uh, button over here was something that could be turned on or off, toggled or whatnot, versus just displaying information. So you can see on here that there's a little circle around that particular icon. And that tells me that this particular icon has an action associated with it. So I click on that and it turns on that light. So I know that there's an action involved because of the little circle there. Hopefully you can see that. Also, when you hover over it, let me get rid of my little mouse thing here. Whenever you hover over it, you can see that kind of lights up a little bit. So it responds to mouse hovers to give you an indication that you're doing. It's just kind of a nice to have visual look to it. And over here, you notice there's nothing over here. When I hover, nothing happens, but you can still click on it and get you know the graphs or the other information. But this tells you there's an actual action uh, identified or available. And you can see those over here. This one has an action. This one has an action. This one doesn't have an action. It just pops up the more info. So that's another tweak that was made to all of these. And those are the ma main tile cards updates that have been done in this version of Home Assistant. Another thing I want to talk about is the header up here. This is new in this version of Home Assistant. If you edit the dashboard, you can add some information up here in this section. And you can align this all different ways. You can go responsive, which will then become stacked on mobile. You can have it left aligned. So if I save it, you'll see now that it moves it over here on the left. If I go with center always, then it will put all the information in the center of the dashboard. And you can also flip where these badges are. So if we look at the badge or if we look at the badge position, we can either do top or we can do bottom and it flips which way it goes. The other thing you can do is you can put some text in here. So in this case, I've put in some text and I have, you can either make this card style by the way, or you can make it text only. If I do card style, you'll see what it looks like. Uh, get out of here. It looks like there's a card up here kind of with a little background and whatnot. So you could do that card style or you can do just text only by editing this section here. And what I've done is done a little bit of um, a template. So I get the, basically the, the, the current status of the, the weather outside. And then the current temperature is reported by the weather station over there. So you can add all of that to it. You can do visibility uh, just like you can with any other card uh, or just leave it alone. And then you have the ability to add these badges as well, which is just like adding any other badge. You just click on this here and you choose an entity or a mushroom template. We'll do an entity here. Let's do sun next dawn dusk and save that. And in eight hours, we can move this over here. So in eight hours, the sun's gonna come up or the sun's gonna go down dusk. And in 19 hours, the sun's going to rise. And then you have these same kind of things you do with any other badges. You can click on it and get the information. Uh, here's a, a graph of the attic temperature. And I just pick random badges. There's no reason to have some of this up here. And then I have the kitchen cans. I can turn those on and off via the badge right here as well. So that's a header section that's now available within the, the home assistant dashboards and you can customize that however you want to. So let me talk about charts for just a second or graphs. 
So they've made some changes to the graphs and the latest, the last release 2025.2, they did some updates to the software that generates these graphs. And what they've done in this release is made it a little bit easier to deal with um, how the, the, the legend works down here. Now I don't have anything right now set up to show more than uh, six device or six items on this one graph. I could keep adding forever, but uh, it's better shown here on their documentation. There's a little bit of a um, ellipsis down here. If you have more than what can be displayed down here at the bottom, you have an ellipsis here that shows up. And then on that ellipsis, you can choose the rest of those on here. In addition to that, they've also made it so you can double click regions. And I don't know if that was available in the last release or not, but at least in this release, you can double click and zoom in. Um, so I just double click the graph and it zooms in for me. I can also select it by holding down the control key and dragging a section of the graph and then letting go. And then I have this section of the graph that also will show me the little, little area that I just highlighted there. Those are some new things in the graph card that they've done. One more thing I'll show you from their blog post that I, cause I don't have anything set up to demonstrate locally here. I do have some, some map stuff, but I don't have enough things on there is this ability to group uh, clustering of trackables on the map. So, in this image right here, you can see that, uh, let me blow it up some more for you. You can see that there are four things in this one spot. You can come over here and it shows you how it shows all of the things that are on the map in that one area. So if you're you got four or five people at home and you want to see who's there, and it's this one, one single dot for everything, you can then now spider it out and you kind of look at everything. Um, or all the, all the entities or things that are in that one spot right there. And as always, there are backward incompatible changes. So make sure you read these. These are the, the ones that are currently backward incompatible. GPST, Home Connect, NQTT, all, all of this right here. And then there's other, some other noteworthy changes up here. If you upgrade Home Assistant, you no longer need to do a hard refresh in your browser. Every time you load a dashboard, it updates the cache in your browser to make sure everything's up to date on your dashboards. That's nice. When you set up a new integration for a new device, it automatically takes you or redirects you to the device page. Um, there's an option to add an extra margin to the top of a section view. Um, I don't know how to do that necessarily. Is there a margin setting in here? In section placement. Um, that something else. Oh, here, add additional space above. Let's see what that does. Yeah, it gives you a little bit more of a margin up here. So that's a new thing that's in this version. Uh, there's now a device class for wind speed sensors. Um, there's energy distance device class for sensors with the following units and media player entities support browsing media now have an action available to browse the media as an action with a response. Okay. And then there's an action to retrieve configuration of a schedule helper. All right, so the final thing I wanna talk about is the voice and, and the streaming responses that are now available. And this is from their blog post. If you have an LLM agent like ChatGPT, that's set up in your assist pipeline or your conversation agent, it's gonna live stream the responses when you're text chatting with it. When I talk about text chatting with it, I'm talking about opening a window and saying, Something like hello, which, yeah, which is, is a text chat, right? Not, this is not available from the voice uh, devices yet. If you're using a larger language model or using slower hardware, it makes the LLM slow down because they need a lot of processing power. So the larger the model, the more processing power it needs. The slower the hardware, the longer it takes to process. So all of that can go together to make it feel a very, feel like a very sluggish response. So they only respond once the entire reply is generated. To mitigate that, they've added support for LLMs to stream their response to the text chat. So you can start reading the response while the response is still being generated on the LLM side. And it also, as a bonus, makes the commands faster. They will be executed as soon as they come in without waiting for a response. So you could say, turn on the lights, the lights come on while the system is formulating the response to tell you that it did the action. So here's an example. On my home assistant production instance, if I say, tell me a long story, 
Watch what happens when I push the button and how long it takes to get the response back. And we'll try that again because that was a fail. And we're waiting and that's how long it took. Three to four to five seconds for that to, to respond. And it sent it all at once because it formulated the entire response and it put it in here in one big chunk. If I come over here and I tell Home Assistant to do the same thing, it starts replying back immediately. So it's formulating the response and it's also streaming the response at the same time. So that is the final feature that has been added to this version of Home Assistant that I'm gonna talk about in this video today. If you're using LLMs on slow hardware, this is gonna speed things up for you. If you're using large language models, on slow hardware, it will help as well. So overall, it'll make things faster and better in your voice responses. All right, that's version 2025.3, at least the pieces that I'm gonna talk about today. Get in there, dig around, play with it, enjoy it, and uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions in Discord or uh, any of my other media places. And thank you for watching. We will see you on the next video.